An artifact is something that can tell us about our ancestors. An incredible artifact is something that goes beyond that. The best artifacts not only give us information, but they also allow us to see the past in a new light, telling us things we never knew before and putting us in touch with the people and civilizations of the past. We know all about those artifacts, and we're very happy to show them to you in this video. There's a mountain in Germany called the Wilzenberg, but the people who live close to it know it better as the holy mountain of the Sauerland. That's because there's a 2,300-year-old hill fort at the top of it, which was adapted into a chapel by early Christian worshippers. There, in April 2021, archaeologists discovered a hoard of Iron Age weaponry. This isn't an old weapons deposit, though. It's the largest Iron Age weaponry hall ever to be found in Germany. Over 150 artifacts have been recovered from the mountain as part of the discovery, including horse fittings, armor, and attack weapons. Experts believe most of them date back to the earliest days of the hill fort's occupation, prior to the arrival of Christianity in the area. That means they belong to the pre-Roman Iron Age in the region. The finds are somewhat enigmatic, as there's no historical record of a battle ever being fought on the mountain and the weapons don't appear to have been damaged in combat. It's possible that they were left here deliberately as a weapons store and then forgotten about. Treasure hunters in Yorkshire, England came across a fantastic collection of ancient Roman bronze artifacts in 2020. They've had a little while to admire them and study them, and now they're sending them to auction where they're expected to fetch a handsome price. There are multiple pieces and many sculptures in the collection, but the standouts are a small bust of Marcus Aurelius, a knife handle modeled on a horse's head, and a tiny statue of the Roman deity Mars. The auction is scheduled for mid-2021, with an estimated value for the whole collection of $120,000, but experts wouldn't be surprised if bidding went far higher than that. The artifacts were found by amateur metal detectorists James Spark and Mark Didlick in Rydale, who contacted professionals to verify the discovery. The professionals told them their objects are roughly 2,000 years old. Considering their age, they're in exceptionally good condition. They appear to have been buried on purpose, which implies that the act happened as part of a religious ceremony, perhaps the closure or opening of a temple. You have to know where to look if you want to find the Isle of Man on a world map. It's a tiny speck of land between the British mainland and Ireland, with a population of less than 90,000. The island is tiny, so there isn't much room for our ancestors to have left ancient valuables behind. But that doesn't mean that there's nothing to be found. In April 2021, the island's head archaeologist Alison Fox confirmed the discovery of an extremely rare 17th century mourning ring. The stunning piece, made of golden crystals and inlaid with black enamel to identify its purpose, is a relic of the English Civil Wars. The initials JD are engraved on the ring, which is sadly as close as we'll ever get to identifying its original owner. Allison believes it was either made for a person of high status or made to mourn a person of high status. It's even possible that it belonged to one of the Stanley family, who were once the lords of the Isle of Man and ruled for over three centuries. There's always been something a little strange about the Sumerian king list, which exists in several different forms. The most famous of them is the Weld Blundell prism, which can be found in Oxford, England, at the Ashmolean Museum. It was found in Iraq in 1922 and has been causing problems for historians ever since. That's because of the lengths of the rings ascribed to some of the former Sumerian rulers it's said to record. The most recent rings detailed on the list are normal and presumably accurate. Sinmagir of the Isin dynasty, for example, is credited with an 11-year reign that began 3,830 years ago. Look closer to the beginning of the list, though, and you'll find kings credited with reigns that span several centuries. One of them is even said to have ruled for 3,600 years. Obviously, this is impossible, but historians have no idea why the reigns have been recorded in this way. 
Their best guess is that the length of the reigns has been exaggerated to emphasize the greatness of that particular king. A second possibility is that in some cases, a reign could be passed down from father to son and seen as a direct continuation rather than a replacement. Are either of these theories correct or are they both wrong? Sadly, we might never know. If a hard material exists on Earth, you can be relatively sure that someone's tried to make armor out of it at some point in the distant past. We've seen armor made of steel, stone, and wood, but this next discovery is a little more unusual than that. It's the remains of a warrior's armor made from reindeer antlers and was found on the Arctic Circle in early 2017. Experts don't think its owner fell in battle here. Instead, based on the decorations on the surface of the unconventional armor, they believe it was left behind as a votive offering by an ancient polar culture. The armor is the oldest ever to be found in Western Siberia, with an estimated age of 2,100 years. The 30 individual plates that make up the protective shell would once have been attached to a leather vest, but that rotted away centuries ago. Other discoveries made at the same site suggests that the people who made this armor also worshipped bears. The idea is based on the discovery of a tiny bronze ring featuring an etching of a bear's paw. It's too small to fit even on a child's finger, so it may have been made for a bear claw instead. You can find almost anything if you go looking in the River Thames in England. There are a lot of things down there that you'd never want to touch, but there are also some fascinating archaeological artifacts. One of them is this shoe. The last time this was attached to someone's foot, England was approaching the eve of the Battle of Hastings. It's around 1,000 years old, but has been well preserved by the muddy bed of the famous river. It was sent to Scotland for analysis after its discovery, where scientists determined that it was made somewhere between 1017 and 1059. This was the time of Anglo-Saxons and Vikings living on the British mainland. William the Conqueror had not yet arrived, but would soon be along in 1066 to claim the throne from King Harold on the battlefield. It's only a humble leather moccasin, but it comes from a crucial point in British history. The date ascribed to the artifact makes it one of the latest Viking-era discoveries to be made in Britain, and it's now in the hands of a museum for preservation and, eventually, exhibition. Here's another remarkable discovery made by an amateur enthusiast and their metal detector. It's a collection of weapons that once belonged to a knight and might be connected to a famous battle. If historians are right about their early assessment of these artifacts, their leftovers from the Battle of Grunwald, which was a key conflict in the Polish-Lithuanian Teutonic War in 1410. The Polish-Lithuanian alliance was ultimately victorious, with the Teutonic Knights either slain on the battlefield or taken prisoner. It's thought that these weapons came from someone on the losing side. There's a sword and its scabbard, two knives, and what appears to be part of a belt buckle. They'd lain undisturbed for more than 600 years prior to their discovery. Since then, they've been sent to the Museum of the Battle of Grunwald in Poland for further study and conservation work. The weapons would have been valuable when they were dropped and also seem to be in good condition, so it's a wonder that no other soldier picked them up and claimed them as their own. It's always exciting when an amateur archaeologist makes a discovery but there are some things you need the trained eye of a professional for. Take this discovery on Alaska's Kodiak Island, for example. To the untrained eye, it's just a large stone slab with a few dents in it. To someone who knows what they're looking at, though, this is an ancient fish trap. It's badly weathered, but it's still possible to work out how the trap worked. It was once surrounded by rock walls and positioned at the mouth of a salmon stream. The area would have been covered by water during high tide, but exposed at low tide. When the tide was high, salmon would swim into the enclosed area and then get trapped there when the tide went back out again. That gave the prehistoric residents of the island an easy meal. It's never easy to get an accurate date for artifacts made of stone, but experts believe this salmon trap was made around 500 years ago. 
The date comes from rock carvings and petroglyphs found close to the trap. It's a simple system, but this trap would still catch salmon today if the gaps were filled in and the walls were rebuilt. The ancient history of China goes back thousands of years, and not all of those years are well researched or understood. Every now and then, a team of archaeologists will discover something that mystifies us. November 2017 was one of those times. That's when this cluster of boat-shaped coffins was found in the southwest of the country, close to Chengdu. Experts thought they'd already seen every kind of burial tradition there was to see in China, but this is a new one for them. There are almost 200 of these strangely shaped burial vessels, all of which were committed to the ground around 2,200 years ago. That puts them on the borderline between two periods, the Autumn Period and the Warring States Period. The contents of the coffins are valuable and elaborately decorated, including pottery, lacquers, and high-quality bronze relics. Experts aren't 100% sure who would have created these graves. It's possible that it was the ancient Shu culture, but we've seen Shu culture graves before and they don't look anything like this. Was this a different burial practice reserved for a specific type of person according to Shu traditions? Or is this something else entirely? The problem with using paper to record important information is that it rips, burns, and decays easily. It's also very easy to lose. If you really want to make a permanent record of something important, you'd be best advised to use a harder, heavier material. Here's one from 1,700 years ago. It's a document written on bronze, discovered in the ruins of an ancient fortress in Svistov, Bulgaria in September 2019. The fortress was built and occupied by the 8th Legion of Augustus 2,000 years ago and held for more than 300 years. It's easy to see why the owner of this document would want to ensure it was damage-proof and hard to lose. It's a certificate from Emperor Gordian III, guaranteeing the bearer full Roman citizenship after the completion of his military service. The document was protected with chains, sealing the two pages together tightly so nobody, not even the owner, could see the contents. Only a handful of approved officials would be trusted with keys to unlock the chains. Sadly for the unknown owner, it appears they never got the chance to claim their Roman citizenship. Let's stay in Bulgaria for a moment and check out another discovery that was made there in April 2021. It's a clay tablet engraved with an early form of writing. In fact, it's probably the ancient equivalent of a letter. The problem is that we have no idea what it says. The artifact found in the city of Bata is around 7,000 years old. That places it between the Stone Age and the Copper Age. Rather than being written in an alphabet that we understand, the engravings are proto-letters. They're similar in style to undeciphered writing on tablets that were found in Romania during the 1960s but aren't thought to be related. The tablet might tell us everything there is to know about it if we could only get to the bottom of the translation issue. But sadly, there's been almost no progress made so far. Other clay tablets containing indecipherable writing have been found elsewhere in Bulgaria in recent years, but this is the best preserved piece found to date. If experts can crack this one, they might be able to crack the rest of them. It's still early days, so perhaps they'll make some progress soon. The Lamashtu plaque has a somewhat troubling alternative name. It's also known as the Hell plaque. That name rather implies that it was made for nefarious purposes, but that isn't the case. Instead, it's actually said to possess supernatural healing powers. Around 2,800 years ago, plaques like this were supposed to protect and heal the sick during bouts of illness. It would be hung above someone's bed in territories across the Assyrian Empire. The example we see in these images is made of bronze and is one of the best preserved plaques of its kind. The name Lamashtu comes from the demon it's said to protect people from, not the deity represented on it. Lamashtu preyed upon the sick according to the myths and legends of the Assyrians and could only be driven out 
by way of special prayers. In Christian terms, you'd probably describe the process as an exorcism. In some cases, including this one, a representation of Lamashtu's husband was added to the plaque in the hope that it would appeal to the demon's better nature. Who knew demons even had one? Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.